Okay, so it looks like I can't help myself, and I will be reviewing Futurama every week because I want to talk about how the West was 1010001, or the third episode of season 11 of Futurama. Hi, Internet, I'm Ren, and I don't have a lot of friends who are watching the most recent season of Futurama, so I'm going to talk about it with you instead. I'll start with some spoiler free impressions before we get into the details and burrow into spoiler territory. This week's episode was really fun, but it It just doesn't rise to the level of a great Futurama episode. I think a lot of us were nervous when we saw that this was going to be a cryptocurrency episode, as Futurama's more topical episodes often end up feeling dated. This was particularly noticeable in the Comedy Central era with episodes like Attack of the Killer App or Decision 3012. Futurama is such a clever show, and there is lots of smart political commentary mixed in over the years, but I think it tends to feel like it's trying too hard when it it gets too on the nose, as opposed to episodes in which the commentary is more interwoven or used in throwaway jokes, which feel more seamless. The way they use cryptocurrency in this episode mostly works, but I think it only narrowly avoids being cringy and doesn't have enough else going for it to really stand out among Futurama's better episodes. Some of the visuals are pretty cool and there were some funny jokes, but it feels like this season of Futurama is still getting back into the swing of things, and I think this episode is going to be one of the more forgettable ones as it progresses, and certainly in the grand scheme of the show. (laughs) But now, let's get into the details. Consider this your spoiler warning for How the West Was 1010001, and other Futurama episodes up to this point. We start the episode with Professor Farnsworth lamenting that he has bankrupted Planet Express because he foolishly invested all their money in Bitcoin. News! Bad! We're bankrupt! Oh, I borrowed money to invest in Bitcoin. Then the price crashed and I sold at a huge loss. We're ruined! The professor borrowed money from the robot mafia and now he has to pay it back. Luckily for him, Bitcoin is surging again, so the crew heads west to California for some good old-fashioned prospecting. Farnsworth plans to mine an element used in Bitcoin mining. The Bitcoin mining uses so much electricity, it's ionizing the atmosphere. Well, every watt of electricity goes to the Bitcoin mining computers. For everyone else, it's practically like living in the old west. And the Planet Express ship has to land and travel by ox. This is so cute and silly, and I honestly love it. It also creates a fun reason for the old west style town to exist and operate in the way that it does. I enjoy that the town is called Doge City. That's a pretty nice topical pun. Fry reads about the exploits of the Borax Kid, who we've seen a few times in the Comedy Central Futurama era. He's always been kind of a weird character, but he does work pretty well in this episode with his whole Western vibe. There's a subplot throughout the episode of Hermes trying to bond with Dwight, who is teenagering so hard. Well, anyway, I'm really looking forward to some quality father-son time. With who? And is way more interested in Roberto than bonding with his dad. I wish Roberto were my dad. He's cooler than a green snake smoking a sugarcane vape. No self-respecting green snake would do that. Poor Hermes, though. He's clearly still traumatized by Roberto and the events of the six million dollar mon. A psychotic killer, that's who? Get down. In which he was mugged by Roberto. <gasps> this here is a mugging. Hand over your skin. And then sought increasingly dramatic upgrades as a result. My favorite Roberto bit in this episode is his gun that shoots knives. Out here in the West, I need something shootier. Like this gun knife I invented stole. It's just completely ridiculous, and we see it several times throughout the episode. I love it. When they arrive in town, the Planet Express crew have to get to work since they have no funds. Until we stake our claim and strike it rich, keep in mind we're bankrupt. So we'll all need to do Old West stuff to get by. Leela gets a job in the saloon. Say, you're new in town and low on cash. You interested in a job as a barmaid and or a prostitute? Amy and Leela are back to their normal frenemy relationship, unfortunately. Um, I'm not sure Leela has the skills to be a barmaid. Give me the tray. Zoidberg is working as the town doctor after Roberto gets rid of the existing doctor. I value doctor-patient confidentiality! Ah, So the town mortality rate's probably about to skyrocket. Bender has a little subplot where he buys a donkey named Rusty who is adorable. It reminds me a bit of when Bender had a turtle friend in Crimes of the Hot. 
We pollute too much. We're destroying the world and killing the turtles. To hell with the turtles. No one insults the turtles. Fry gets hustled by the Borax Kid. Not to play poker with you. Well, then how about a hand to Colorado Chump? As long as it's not poker. It's money and helping folks. Double Chump. You lose. And then becomes his new sidekick. Well, shucks. My sidekick seemed to be dying right regular and in gruesome fashion. Care to be in my new sidekick? Really? Do I get to die in your next book? Page three. Then you got yourself a galoot. Dwight tries to befriend Roberto and agrees to help him with a heist, but gets run over by a carriage. Amy uses Bender's ass to pan for thallium. Barely any thallium. Just worthless gold. And finds a nice big nugget. It's so beautiful. They all agree to take turns guarding it, except for the professor. I'd take a shift myself, but I am already in my pajamas. Who has returned to his true form. Roberto holds up Bender, and in the morning, the crew discovers he's missing, and so is the nugget. But Rusty, the tracking donkey, is on the case. Come on, he's picked up Bender's scent. He's what now? Rusty leads them to the saloon and a back room that is not a brothel, but a warehouse full of robot heads being used to mine for Bitcoin. This was a pretty good reveal and worked well as commentary on the exploitative and damaging consequences of Bitcoin, while also just being an interesting sci-fi concept. Turns out it was the saloon lady all along. I like that she donates the proceeds to a local orphanage. Mining Bitcoin with kidnapped robot heads? It's pure evil! Hardly. I donate all the proceeds to a local orphanage. I'm not sure if it was intentional or not, but it almost seems like a reference to how a lot of towns in the West were actually funded and established by women who ran brothels. She locks them in. Seal you in this comfortably air-conditioned warehouse. Forever. But I'll drop by every day with snacks. Oh, snacks are good. But she promises to come back daily with snacks. Aw, see, that's nice. The crew extracts Bender's head from the mining operation and reattaches him to his body, and Rusty the Burrow burrows them on out of there. Burrow! Burrow! (laughs) I deserve that. Fry discovers that the Borax Kid is a fraud. Jig is up. I found your collection of Buffalo Bill Cobalt novels. You just copied those and replaced his name with yours. They make a pretty funny copyright joke when Fry confronts him. What? Well, now there's nothing illegal about that. Those old stories are public domain. I change up a few words and claim the copyright for myself. Never heard of Cinderella? That is so evil. Fry challenges him to a duel. I'm calling you out, kid. The piano playing robot from the saloon and the shopkeeper who we've seen bickering throughout the episode. Get yourself tuned to get out of town, you overgrown teletype machine. <laughs> also decide to duel. Did you stop that racket? <laughs> Not till you stop that damn captain. And I'm calling you out. <laughs> and so do Bender and the saloon lady. <laughs> Delilah, you headnapper! I'm calling you out. You're all. The six-way gunfight is the best part of the episode. It's got some really cool shots and the concept is extremely funny. I love the way Futurama took the Western theme and really made it their own here, although it still doesn't compete with something like Where the Bugalo Roam. Great episode. Dwight rescues Hermes with the power of limbo, and Hermes finally gets the father-son bonding he wanted, although Dwight should probably get his spine checked out. Oh, spine! It's magnificent! I take after my dad. Also, I got run over. Now follow me! Having Phil Lamar voice Dwight is kind of a weird choice. Like, are they just cheaping out on getting another voice actor? Or why is that happening? Camp? Doesn't it look like a good place to make camp? It looks stupid. This whole trip is stupid. You're stupid, Pops. He just feels a bit old to voice such a young character, although he did manage to make it work at least most of the time. But there were some lines where it was pretty obvious. The professor gets the nugget back from the saloon lady and goes to exchange it to pay off the robot mafia, but the mafia ends up getting lured into the back room and used for Bitcoin mining. If we ever get out of here, I'm going to give this brothel a really bad Yelp review. And that's the end of the episode. So I guess they did not liberate the other robots, just Bender. (laughs) 
As I said at the top of the video, it's an okay episode, but not a great one. I enjoyed it more than the season premiere, but it's not as good as Children of a Lesser Bog. I'm fine with Futurama's sillier episodes, but I think even those tend to work better when there's more of a dramatic or emotional backdrop to the whole thing. This one sort of just meanders along at one emotional level, and so it ultimately feels a bit forgettable. That said, some of the jokes totally worked for me, and I really liked Bender's animal sidekick. We're just a guy with no ass in his ass. I think this episode also just felt a little disjointed, and so many of the characters had little subplots that they didn't really have time to fully develop any of them. I had more fun with this episode than The Impossible Stream, and I don't think it's as bad as some of Futurama's other more topical and now dated episodes, but it isn't one that I'll go back to regularly or show my friends if I'm trying to get them into Futurama, if that makes sense. I think after 10 years, they're still knocking off some of the rust, and I'm hoping the season will keep improving as it goes along. Again, though, this wasn't a bad episode by any means, and I don't think I'll skip it on rewatches or anything. It's got enough fun concepts and good jokes that I do think it will hold up even as the crypto elements become more dated and less relevant. I'm glad they really didn't involve crypto bros in this episode at all, because first of all, they already made fun of them in the impossible stream with the scary mirror sequence. A burger. And check the price of my NFTs, because I'm an important tech guy. NFTs worthless. What? And I think it would have bogged down an episode that was already pretty messy even more. That is just my opinion. Did you like this episode more than I did? Let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. Like and subscribe for more videos. See you next time. Peter Zane.